the popliteal fossa. The popliteal fossa is a diamond shaped halo on the back of the knee joint. It becomes extremely prominent when the knee is flexed. This fossa is an important anatomical area because it provides passage for the important vessels as well as nerves from thigh to the leg. Now let us discuss about what are the boundaries of the popliteal fossa. The fossa is bounded supramedially by semitendinosus and semimembranosus and supralaterally biceps femoris. And if you see the inframedial boundary is by the medial height of gastronemius and the infralateral boundary is by the lateral height of the gastronemius supplemented by plantiles. So this is what is about the boundaries of the popliteal fossa. And now let us discuss about the anterior wall or the floor. The anterior wall or the floor is formed by the structures above downwards that is by the popliteal surface of the femur, the capsule of the knee joint as well as oblique popliteal ligament and at last is the popliteal fascia covering the popliteal muscle. And next is about the roof or the posterior wall of the popliteal fossa. The roof is formed by a strong popliteal fascia and the superficial fascia over the roof contains short saphenous vein as well as three important cutaneous nerves that is the terminal part of the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh and sural communicating nerve as well as posterior division of the medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh and the roof is pierced by all these structures except the posterior division of medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh. And now let us discuss about the contents of the popliteal fossa. The main contents of the popliteal fossa are the popliteal artery and its branches, the popliteal vein and its tributaries, tibial nerve and its branches, common peroneal nerve and its branches, as well as popliteal lymph nodes and popliteal pad of fat. All these are the contents of the popliteal fossa. In addition to these contents, the popliteal fossa also contains the structures like posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh as a terminal part and descending genicular branch of the obturator nerve as well as the terminal part of the short saphenous vein. This is about the popliteal fossa. If you see the relationship of the tibial nerve, popliteal vein and the popliteal artery in the popliteal fossa, if you see very carefully here, the popliteal artery is crossed superficially by the popliteal vein from lateral to the top of the medial side and which is crossed superficially by the tibial nerve from lateral to the medial side. So as a result, the relative relationship of these structures differ in the upper, middle as well as lower parts of the fossa. If you see the upper part of the fossa over here very clearly, from lateral to the medial side, the order is nerve, vein and artery. But in the middle part of the fossa, from superficial to deep, the order of arrangement is like nerve, vein and artery. And if you see the lower part of the fossa, that is from lateral to the medial side, the order of arrangement is artery, vein as well as nerve. And this is what is about the relationship of these structures present in the popliteal fossa. By this we completed all the important anatomical points about the popliteal fossa.